I said, okay then, let, let, let me reply. Like I said, I really I don't bother with all this nonsense. I, I, I reply. Yeah, and like, like I said, like, I, I don't play these games. I'm a big man, you know. Yeah. I don't play these games, but I've just got to start putting people in the Can I read what now. you said? Do you remember Kevin saying to me, oh, Coley, Coley, do you, um, you fancy it this morning? I'm, I'm honest. I said to him, to be honest, I, I don't fancy it this morning. I remember he said, well, if you don't fancy it, you, we can fuck off. <laughs> I always said to my agent at the time, I said, if I'm going to leave Newcastle, I'm, I'm only going to want to. I'm going to Man United, it's as simple as that. You know what they say? Things in life are meant to happen for a reason. So with my ex, my ex-wife, then it was like, yeah. You know, got to the first um, first year when I was going through medication, all that kind of stuff. Uh, about seven months into my transplant, she said, ah. Oh, I can't do this anymore, I'm, I'm out, I want a divorce. I, I was going through something that I, I didn't really understand. By the time you got into hospital, you, your body had given up on you. He said, because you was fit, you've been a sportsman in your past life, that's what kept you going until the Monday. Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam Akola. He is Jay Mutty. And of course, the man to my right is the goal king himself, Andy Cole. And we are here today for a special interview with Andy to speak about his career, but also about the great things that he's doing for the Andy Cole Fund and Kidney uh, Research Charity UK, um, which has got a great day coming up soon as well. First things first, though. How you doing? Yeah, Thank very you for good. joining us. Yeah, very good. Very it's good. an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Like we, <clears throat> me and Jay particularly speak about you a lot. Maybe because we just reminisce about the great times all the time. <sighs> but um, you are someone that we hold in high regard. So thank you for joining us on the channel. It's been a it's fine. pleasure. Um, tell us a little bit about the Andy Cole Fund um, and why you've set that up. What do you want to know? I want to know everything. Uh, Seriously. Well, well for, for me personally, why, why I want to say, obviously, um, I think 217, um, I fell ill, uh, kidney. And um, I, I was a bit naive, ignorant to it, um, believing that, oh, yeah, I'll just get on with it and everything be okay. And it, it didn't work out that way. So obviously, uh, having, having a transplant and sitting down with um, Kidney Research UK, they uh, asked me would I be prepared to come on board and start my own fund up. Um, I had to take a little time out to um, think about it because I, I was going through something that I, d I didn't really understand. Uh, so once I did I take the time out, thought about it, I said, yeah, because it's a difficult situation to be in, to not understand something. But when I did start to understand it a little bit better, I knew there were so many people in the same position as myself going through what I went through, um, not understanding it. Um, support network, uh, not as they would have liked it to have been, mm. you know, because um, <clears throat> not everyone's prepared to sit down and go to a situation with husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, when they find out just how tough a situation can be. Mm. I mean, I, I think the easiest thing is to up and go because the individual doesn't understand it or doesn't want to understand it. So I, I think in, in the end, that's what I want to do because I, I just want to help so many other people like myself and give something back and I've, I've enjoyed it since then no you're definitely <clears throat> doing that with, the, with with obviously the fund and with the work that you're doing with the kidney research um uk when your illness happened it it wasn't something that you could like were aware that was happening it just came out of the blue right yeah it's totally random um i remember obviously doing some work for manchester united in ambassador role and uh, and was in vietnam uh, which is beautiful, by the way. I had, I had a great time there. Got home from Vietnam. Didn't feel particularly well. You know, um, I just started getting a bit of water retention. So I basically, I, I thought nothing of it. I just thought, oh, I'm a bit jet lagged. And I, I remember, um, like I said, not feeling well, calling Dr. Stone, the old Man United doctor. He popped around and come and see me and just said to me, look, um, I get an appointment to go into um, the Cheadle Hospital. Uh, I said, yeah, not a problem. Uh, I remember he set the appointment up. Went, he said, I'll, I'll let you know uh, Monday morning what the results are. And I remember just getting a call on Monday morning and he said to me, look, you need to get yourself in the hospital as quick as possible. But like I said, I, I was still very ignorant to it. And I went into hospital. And the crazy thing is that I, I remember my consultant was actually waiting at the door for me. So when your consultant was actually waiting at the door, you, you're saying, so why is he waiting at the door? Yeah. This, this don't happen, you know? 
So I remember my consultant walking me in and having a small chat. And I, I kept saying to him, I haven't got time here, I've got things to do. He said, yeah, yeah, not a problem, not a problem, yeah. You, you'll be out of here in half hour. But he already knew what was going on. Yeah. And he just kept asking me how I felt. I said, I'm, I'm just a bit tired at the moment, you know, I just feel really tired, just want to see. He said, okay, not a problem. He said, have you had any symptoms? I said, no, I've had no symptoms whatsoever. So he said, okay, then we're just going to run a few tests and I'm going to let you go. So I said, yeah, because I need to do something, so I don't want to be in the hospital. I'm, I'm not a hospital guy anyway, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a typical man. So I'm, I'm, I remember I'm in there, he's running these tests, and he said to me, are you sure you've not had any symptoms? I think within five minutes, he say, be sure that I had these symptoms, you know, the hiccup started. Um, that's a sign of basically your kidney not working properly. And then constantly itching. Uh, you got a thousand ants on you. And that, that, that was it. That was it. And when, when he broke it down to me, he just said to me, look, the top and bottom of it is by the time you got into hospital, you, your body had given up on you. He said, because you was fit, you've been a sportsman in your past life. That's what kept you going until the Monday. He said otherwise. I mean, That's incredible. So yeah. So you just got there in time. The Monday um, was basically the Monday was my last day. That's madness. My and then, day. how long after was it till you got the transplant? Because it was your nephew yeah. that you got the transplant, right? Right. Did you kind of have to do tests and things like that? Too? Yeah, we had to do all, all tests and that, but everything's protocol. So straight away, you know, it's. It's medical protocol whereby it's, it's a mind game kind of thing, right? What we're going to do, we're going to have to go through this medication, medication, and try to bring the kidney back. But nine times out of ten, they already know <laughs> that it won't happen, but they've got to do their job properly. So I did that, and I was on all kind of medication. I, I remember I sat with him one day, and I said to him, look, you need to get, get me off these medications because they're absolutely sending me mad. You know, your thought process is absolutely ridiculous. You know, and I'm just sitting with him talking, tears running down my eyes. I said, oh, you got to get me off these tablets because they're sending me absolutely ballistic. He said, yeah, OK, no problem. That's, that's the last ones, you know, so... It's How did it affect your relationship with your family and stuff? Was it difficult uh, for them as well, or...? I think I, with, with my kids, yeah. It, it, to, I think when you are fit and well and your kids only know you as fit and well, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, my God, my dad, what's going to happen with my dad? Uh, my then wife, who's now my ex-wife, was at the start was really good. I mean, really good, very, very supported, very, very supportive. Sorry. But in the end, the support that she gave me at the start was like, well, nah, all of a sudden, nah, nah, I, I can't do it anymore. Mentally, I can't do it anymore. But as, as men, men don't really talk about what they're going through. Mm. That's what we are. That's yeah. the way we're built. You know, so it was like, right, I'm not prepared to, to do it anymore because it's like, you don't want to talk about things and, you know... Um, kind of closed up. Yeah, because it's my, it's, it's kind of like, I view it as kind of like, it's my problem. I've got to try and deal with it the yeah, best yeah. that I can. If, if I can't deal with it, how can anybody else deal with yeah, it? Yeah. It's, it's my problem. Um, like I said, the, the kids found it really tough. But in, in the end, it, you know what they say? Things in life are meant to happen for a reason. So with my ex, my ex-wife, then it was like, yeah, you know, got to the first um, first year when I was going through medication, all that kind of stuff. Uh, about seven months into my transplant, she said, ah, oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm out. I want a divorce. But okay, not a problem. So then my focus has always been on my kids. I mean, I, I didn't care what position I was in. It was always about my kids. And I, I remember when I was in hospital, I mean, struggling with it when I first went down with it. My son was at Man City then, and he had um, to give him a new contract. But he basically said, look, I don't want to sign a contract because I want to be able to go and play games, I want to go out and learn or whatever. So in the end, they turned and said, you know what, nah, we withdraw the contract. So I'm in hospital. I think my first few days in hospital struggling with what I've got. My son's out of contract. Um, my daughter's not taking it too well. You know, at that stage, yeah, my, my, my ex-partner was like sticking by me, so I thought, yeah. But my mentality was firmly fixed on my kids. And I remember my son sitting with me in hospital, said, oh, dad, what am I gonna do and whatever? I've not got a club and, I mean, he's, he's well enough, he's crying and whatever. And I'm turning around and saying to myself. It's Devante, right? Yeah, yeah. He's doing well now at Barnsley. Yeah. And so I was just around and said, you know what, fuck this. This ain't about me. Whatever I'm gonna do now, if I ain't gonna make it out of it, I'm gonna make sure my son gets a club. 
So my focus was strictly on my kids. That, that's all it's on. Do you think having those other focuses kind of helped you at that time? Because um, was it was it? I, I don't know because when when I sat down with my consultant at that time, he, he actually turned around and said to me one day, he said, "Mr. Coles," I said, "Yeah." He said, "When are you going to think about yourself?" I'm like, "What do you mean?" He said, "You talk about your kids." You talk about, obviously, your ex-wife at the time. You don't talk about you. And that, I was like, oh, yeah, but they need me. They, they. So he said to me, he was, he was blunt as day, and he, he turned around and said to me, okay, you're not a problem, I understand you, but what you need to understand is if you're not going to make it, they grieve and they do all those things, but they get over it. But I didn't understand it. I was like, that must be, be mad to hear yeah. someone saying that to you. Yeah, but he's, he's just being honest because, like yeah. I said, I, I'd never ever thought about myself. And when, when I took it in, I said, he's right. When am I actually going to think about what I need or how I'm going to try to get out of it or the process of having a transplant, how, how difficult it might be? Because I was thinking, oh man, I'll just get over it. Let's man yeah. up. Yeah. It ain't man up, get on with it. Ain't, you know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing to it. And then he said that, he's like, I reevaluated things for a little bit, thought about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But bang, my focus was back on my kids again. You know what I mean? It, it, it was tough at the time. Mm. What was it like during that time? Were you aware of the sort of the fans' response? Because I remember when the news broke, fans were singing your name in the ground. And did you, did you were you aware of that? Did you know the fans? You were know, sort of... I, 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 I don't know what it is. I, I, I'm one of them. I'm lucky guys. You know, I've, I've always had a great rapport with fans. I, I don't know. Well, I don't know, because I run around and used to get a dab on or whatever, used to try to put my foot in every now and then or whatever it may be, but I've, I've always had a great reception with the fans. And, you know, when, when I heard about, I mean, what the fans were singing and, you know, everyone was keeping me well informed about it. Yeah, it's, it's touching. It's touching now that they're still singing my song now. I've been yeah. retired how many years? And, you know, I mean, you go away in Europe and I've got all these people singing my song and... I say to people, well, I must have done something right. I think winning loads mm -hmm. of trophies and scoring loads of goals out. Yeah. To be fair. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a bit I'm, I'm no different to anybody else who played in that team and played in that era, you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. I'm very blessed, and I, I, I enjoy it to know that the fans really appreciate what, what I've done and what I tried to do when I was at Manchester United. You, know? you see how you kind of mentioned when you were going through the illness and you were focusing on your family, and not focusing on yourself. I kind of reflect related that to your career because you, um, you almost go under the radar, mm. like team player. E even yeah. though you are one of the most elite British strikers of all time, you go under the radar, and uh, you. We've kind of had a few conversations. We have these conversations all the time. I know you've picked up a few of them online. Yeah, I just find that mad. And about the illness, I remember I interviewed you after a charity game at Old Trafford, where you didn't participate, I yeah. think you were assistant manager, mm. but you took the kick off and then you came off the pitch yeah, yeah. straight away. And because in my head you are Andy Cole, the man that scores all the goals for United, and I just, I'm a, I remember questioning you and asking you, oh, why didn't you play? Just completely forgetting that, hold on, he's had a well-publicized illness. You kind of just look yeah. at these guys like, you're my sporting hero and you're still, so it must be, Difficult to go through that while people are still kind of looking at you like, like a you know, just holding you up in high regard while you're still going through this illness. It's kind yeah, of, it's, it's a weird one. The the transition has, has been really really difficult. Um, going down with being mad fit, doing whatever I want to do, uh, retiring, keeping fit, continue to do what I want to do, and then bang, all of a sudden, someone actually turns around and says, "Well." You won't be able to do certain things anymore. It's like, you turn around and say to yourself, nah, I'm not accepting that. I don't accept. Right, crack on, just do what you're doing. And I remember doing it and actually pushing myself to the limit. And then realizing once I push myself to the limit, the next day was a write-off. And I might come back the day after, but that might be a write-off as well. But I, that, I couldn't get it into my mind that I'm not the individual that I used to be. And I think that, that was one of my toughest battles because mentally I'm fighting myself then. Mm. And all I get to say to myself is just man up your back. And then people like me must be like, why didn't you play today? It must be like, why'd you think I didn't play? Yeah, like, yeah, it yeah, must yeah. be like quite annoying. It's like, hold on, I know why, it, but because of your Andy Cole, I kind of just forget that you, you go through those things. It's, it's crazy, man. You've got the Kidney Research Andy Cole Fund 
um, golf day coming up on the 28th of June. Um, I'm playing, you know. Yeah, you, you I've, heard, I've yeah, never yeah. played golf in my life, you know. What a way to learn. Like, I've never <laughs> played golf. I've got a good team. I've got a few lads coming with me. I've got Theo Baker, Cal Freezy coming with me. They play quite regularly. So hopefully they'll bail me out. But I'm I'm a little bit worried. Are you good? You've been playing for, uh, for years? Is golf you know, your, I, your thing? It, it, it was. And Yorkie got me into it. Yeah. I'm, I mean, when I retired and when we was playing, Yorkie said, Cody, come and play golf. I was like, Yorkie, I don't do those things, man. <laughs> And I retired, it was one of those ones, right, what are you going to do? So you always said, just play golf, bruv. <laughs> so I started playing and I played, um, got down to, what, 12 within a year. And then the crazy thing is, I felt ill. I've had to stop playing. Then, I mean, get down low again, and then all of a sudden I fall ill again. So over the last few years, of my illness in dealing with that is like, I play a little bit, fall ill, play. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not bad when I play. But it's just consistency, that's what golf's Because a lot of footballers play during their career, so yeah. you just picked it up after you finished. Yeah, and that was it, because I'm turning around and saying, what, what am I going to do, seriously? I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into coaching. Um, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to go into management and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like, right, get out. You're out of the house for four or five hours, whatever it is. But it's your time. Mm. I mean, it's your time to do what you want to do and... I mean, try and piece things together. So yeah, I, I, I really got into it massively then. Does it get competitive with all the ex-players playing golf against each other, or is it a bit more relaxed? No, because it, sportsmen are, are crazy. Because when you retire, you think, oh yeah, it doesn't change. And I mean, it doesn't change. <laughs> I mean, I think that's the toughest thing about us as well. We get to a certain age, we can't do things like we used to. We get frustrated with ourselves right. instead of accepting, but yeah. we, we we don't accept. And that's, that's the problem, because we can't accept, like, oh, well, I used to be able to do this. I'm more used to, yeah. But you're at an age now where you've got to accept, no, I can't do that. You know, it's, 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 it's just the mentality will always be the same. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, it, I didn't even know what a four ball was here when, I, when, we, when we entered. <laughs> and then I found out that means you got four people on your team. So if you, who's on your team? I'm not sure yet. If you could pick your own team from... Maybe teammates, friends, whoever. Who would you pick if you could pick a dream four ball? Dream four tournament? ball. Oh, that's a good question. That I don't, you know, I don't know. O -o Always, Yorkie York going to be in it because he start got his. No, start I, I don't. I don't think Yorkie's going to be here. I think he's, he's out of the country. No, this is a dream one. This <laughs> oh yeah, the, the dream one. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I, I, I love Yorkie, yeah, and but he, he takes golf so serious. I mean, cause my, my mentality with golf is, right, I've been a professional once. I won't be a pro again. Yeah. I mean, that's my mentality. I enjoy it, yeah. At times I get frustrated, but then I'll turn around and say to myself, bro, you play at the highest level of the sport that you dedicate yourself to. <laughs> I mean, uh, so, yeah, I, I, would have, I would have Yorkie in there. Um, I think I would, I would Michael Jordan. He's he, a keen golfer. Yeah, he loves his golf. very good. And another one I find I find really interesting as well is um, is Brian Lara, because Brian used to bat obviously cricket left-handed, but play golf right-handed, and play golf left-handed as well. No so why he played golf right-handed was he didn't want it to interfere with his cricket swing, oh. and like and his low numbers as well. I don't know if he's, he's someone like I don't know six, five or six. And you turn around and say yourself. Man, he bats left-handed, plays golf right-handed, but then he's a low handicap, and that messes with me because I can't even hold it right-handed because I'm, I'm a left-handed yeah. player. I'm like, I can't even hold it right-handed. I'm, I'm going to be left-handed as well. Yeah, so... Um, I, I Do think... you know? Are you sure? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found out yet? You might work that one out when you get there. Uh, uh, last one, uh, Tiger Woods. That's, that's, a, a, that's a dream team yeah, form, yeah, all yeah, that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. By the way, guys, you can enter as well. Um, the link's in the description below. If you want to come down, play golf with, with, with Andy, myself, try and try and get something going there. Um, then you, the link's in the description below. You can enter. You can also come down for the day and all that stuff. And there's a link to uh, donate as well. So make sure you're doing that. Um, but yeah, why is it important to be these kind of days? For me, I'm, I'm at that stage now whereby the importance is, we, I, I did my gala dinner back in the last year. It's, it's fantastic. The turnout was unbelievable. Um, the support is Ridiculous. And you always got, got in the back of your mind when you do something like that, you know, will people actually turn up? 
I mean, but the way people turned up for me and obviously um, the charity, the cause, what it's all about, it's been phenomenal. Uh, so it's it's the same kind of thing as well. I think everyone looks at me as if to say, right, oh my God, I said, Nicole, you should play football at the highest level. He's got the same problems that I have. And the response I've had on like, social media and that people asking me questions about how I deal with things. And, so, and I, what I always try to explain to people is, I'm still dealing with it now. Mm. Don't look at me as a, as a mortar because I have up and up good days, bad days. I'm, I'm just like you, but because I'm in the public eye, everyone looks at me as if to say, oh, he's dealing with it really mm. well. There's days when I'm turning around and saying to myself, I don't want to get out of bed today, you know, but yeah, no, I, yeah. I have to deal with it. You know, so that's why I always say to people, you know, I'm, I'm no different than you are. It's just that I'm in the public eye and I'm really trying to push this. I mean, for, for awareness and people to understand what it is. No, 100%. Uh, make sure you're supporting the charity Kidney Research UK and the Andy Cole Fund. And if you can, get down to the golf day on the 28th of June. Links in the description below. Obviously, we are a Manchester United fan channel. Um, so we do want to speak about your career a little bit as well. Um, just before United, though, obviously, you started off at Arsenal. Um, you went through a few clubs before you ended up at Newcastle. What was that like starting off? Because uh, Arsenal... Um, it didn't quite go to plan for you there, did it? Um, how, how did that? Like? Uh, you know, that's, I, I think that's been the, the stigma f stigma throughout my career. Um, I, I, yeah, I will voice my opinion. I'm, I'm a quiet individual, but I mean, I'm one of those people that I listen, I'll take it all in. But once I've had enough, I've, I've had enough. Uh, I think my, my time at Arsenal was a, was a little bit like that. You know, I was at Arsenal from when I was a kid. I mean, I was, I was playing for Arsenal when I was like, I mean, 12, 13, you know, uh, signed schoolboy forms when I was 14, you know, and at that time, also like Manchester United were all the kids come through the academy. Yeah. So then they had um, Michael Thomas, David Rowcastle, Paul Davis was a little bit older, Martin Hayes, Martin Keown, Paul Merson, and all those guys have gone to the first team early, early doors, I'm talking 20 ish. Now, in back in those days, if you're getting in the first team at 20-ish, wow. Yeah. Mm. You know, so it, it was one of those ones. And I remember when I was signing schoolboys when I was 14, I was thinking, well, if these guys could get in at 20, I mean, I'm thinking, six years' time, if everything worked out well, you know, I could possibly be able to get in the first team. So I said, sign schoolboys and whatever. And during my time there, joined full-time after leaving the national school, full-time. And then... um. The, the first thing that kind of like cheesed me off was raw. The Irish and the Scottish boys and that, you know, they were like turning pro at 17, 16, yeah, 16, 17. I'm like, when I ask them about that, yeah, they say, no, 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 no. No, you've got to turn pro at 17, no one turns pro at 16. So when I found out, obviously, boys chatting, I'm like saying, no, 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 no. I'm not having this. So I, within about, I don't know, six, eight months or whatever, I went off. I said, no. I said, such and such turning pro at 16, 17, whatever it's going to be. And you're telling me I've got to do my two-year YTS. Yeah, tell I'm 16 and can only turn pro when I'm 17. So I said, no, it can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I straight away, I'm, I'm, I'm having difficulties with that. And it's, I mean, they said, well, that's just the way it is. You know, we've decided that that's the way we're going to do it. So, so, I, so in, in my second year, my second year, I was having a few problems with um, Pat Rice, the youth team coach. Then. So I was having a few problems with him. I mean, because Pat, you know, Pat's very energetic and very boisterous. Yeah, and I'm saying, I said, I, I don't like the way these guys talking to me, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't like it. But that was then. You could talk to people however you want to speak to people, then yeah. everyone had to get on with it. So I remember um, with training, and he said to me, Oh, you're standing up front like an effing lighthouse. I said, you know, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah, I, I bust a little bit of skill, uh, scored, got the ball, volleyed it, and just walked off. Yeah, I walked off, got showered, uh, got dressed. And obviously, because I wasn't driving then, I said, I'm done. And uh, David O'Leary was there. And I said, oh, uh, David, can I have a lift, please? He said, yeah, he said, you finished, Coley. So I said, yeah, 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 I'm finished, I'm finished. <laughs> he said, Coley, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm finished. He said, okay, then I'll, I'll drop you. So he dropped me to um, uh, Cock Fosters. So I, said, yeah. so I went home, 
I just packed all my stuff. Packed yeah. all my stuff. Because I, I, I live with my sister. I packed all my stuff. I remember saying to my sister, I'm done. And she, my sister said, Andrew, what do you mean? She said, yeah, I'm done. I can't. I can't have, I can't let people talk to me like this. Did you think you were done just at Arsenal no, in I'd, general? No, I'd, I'd made my mind up. Oh. I'm done. Okay. Right, okay. You know what I mean? I don't business what anyone else is telling me. I'm done. And I'm, I remember my sister, no, no, Andrew, you can't. I said, nah, sis, I'm done. I packed my bag. And then my brother-in-law spoke to me, said to me, Andrew, you can't do this, man. You can't. I said, nah, I, I, I can't do it anymore. So I packed all my stuff up and left. And I remember I was still getting in touch with my mum because when I was younger, the only person I listened to was my mum. Right. I mean, and I phoned my mum and said, oh, situations happen. We want Andrew to come back, but he said he's not coming back. Can you have a word with him? So my mum was like, and as my son and that, he's very, very headstrong. If he makes his mind up, I mean, I, I'll talk to him, but it's going to be a difficult one. So I remember my mum speaking to me and my, my dad was like, he, my dad was totally different because my dad never wanted me to go play football anyway. Really? Yeah, because my dad was, I mean, Jamaican cricket. <laughs> but understood that, obviously, when he first came to the country, how difficult it was, it was for him. Yeah. So I remember him saying when I was young, it's like, you can't play football. A black man can never, ever make a career out of football. And I said, my dad, nah, nah, of course, it's changed, it's changed. My dad was saying, what's changed? No. He said, you're going to have to be three times better than your counterpart to get anywhere. So I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Not until I actually got into football, I understand what he was saying. Yeah. I mean, like at that time, my dad was saying, boy, it's up to you, you know. So I had my mum on my case, my sister, my brother-in-law on my case. And I said to Mike, then, I'll go back, yeah, and I'll see how it goes. So I went, I went back, yeah, and they said to me, all right, then, Cole, what are we going to do? We're going to give you a pro contract when you're 17. So I ended up signing pro, yeah. Playing well, scoring goals in the, in the youth team, got into reserves and things like that, doing all right. But for some reason, I, I wasn't going anywhere. And I, I remember I, I kept saying, I kept saying then, I'm good enough to get in the first team now. So I'm about 18, 19 then. Yeah. But I'm, I'm thinking I'm good enough to get in the first team now. But the manager then, George Graham, didn't believe I was good enough to, to get in the first team. So. I always had problems with him. So I remember one day he, he pulled me in, and we was at Highbury. And his office was, it was unbelievable. I remember Highbury steeped in history and I walked in his office. And I didn't actually realize when I went in there, but when you walked in, it's like his chair was like looking down on you. <laughs> like a throw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, little man games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, I remember walking in there, I'm looking around his office, and I'm saying to myself, oh my gosh, his office is proper, man. I remember sitting down, but like I said, I didn't really get it at the time. I remember he saying, ah, you, are, you think you're the bee's knees, you? But because he, he, his accent was so broad, yeah, big, broad guy. I'm saying to myself, what's this guy actually saying? <laughs> I mean, bee's knees. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why he's, he's saying business. Yeah. yeah. Bee's knees, I'm like, I don't know what this guy's saying, you know, but. I get on with it. And then I'm, I'm off having a little argument with him. And in the end, he said to me, oh, you know, get out, get out. So I ended up walking out. And then um, like I said, sign a contract. Within possibly six months, they gave me a new contract. Yeah. Okay. So I'm turning around and saying to myself, well, I must be doing something right here. Um, made my debut in um, that pre-season tournament, Makita tournament at Highbury. Made my debut there. And then... Uh, Come on in the charity shield. I remember that. Come in the charity, charity shield. Then after that, it, it, it just didn't materialise. So I, I remember I said, look, I, I want to go on loan. So I ended up going on loan. So my first loan was at Fulham. Not what Fulham, what you see now. Yeah, it's Fulham back then. It was horrendous. Really? Oh, it was shocking. I had no money. I remember we used to train at um, Putney Fire Station. Yeah. <laughs> So was it was this like was Jimmy Hill still involved? Yeah, 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 yeah. Back then, I yeah. I'll, so, see, yeah. I'll, I'll get <laughs> get to that. So we're training there, and in those days you had to bring your own training kit, get it washed, and all those kind of things. Yeah. So the fire station, you was training mud like that. Yeah. So then you come off, and like, I'm like, bro, this not happen at Austin. You know? <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking. So you do that. So I'm I'm there, and Jimmy Hill pulled me in one day. And I, I remember him saying to me, he pulls me out of the cottage, he said, can I work? I said, yeah, not a problem. Now, considering I'm on loan there, yeah. yeah. And what, what he sat me out, he said, he said, oh, you, you, you think you're a bit of a player, yes? I said, yeah, I think I'm, I'm okay. I mean, I think, yeah. He said, well, 
I don't think you're gonna make a career out of it. <laughs> Cause I remember saying to him, oh, that's your opinion, not mine. Yeah. I remember getting up, just walking out. So I'm saying to myself, years later, I've turned around and said to myself, but if I'm alone, how can a next chairman talk to me like that when I'm, yeah. I'm a low knee at your football club? I'm trying to help your football club. <laughs> Bizarre thing to say. Yeah, and you're trying to pass judgment on me. Yeah. So I, I went back, I finished my long period, three months, finished my long period, went back to Arsenal. Then um, Bristol City wanted to take me. Uh, Danny Smith just got a job there. So they said, uh, Coley Bristol City want to take you from now to the end of the season or something. I so, yeah, man, why not? Dennis has got a job. Didn't know Dennis at the time. Took me there. I went there and I, I just bang goals for fun. Yeah. Um, and then come to the end of the season, I, I got a phone call from, from uh, Pat Rice. Uh, and Rice said, Coley, Coley, um, that's a quick one. Derby are interested in you. I thought, okay, yeah, not a problem. He says, uh, they want to buy you. So I said, yeah, not a problem. Not a problem. He said, oh, the Arsenal want to sell me then. He said, uh, I'll come back to you. I'll, I'll let you know. So I said, okay, not a problem. Now, the first time I see Pat after this conversation was we played Arsenal what, a few months ago at the Emirates. It's the first time I've seen really? Pat and had a conversation. So to this day, I, I didn't know if Arsenal wanted to sell me or keep me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, it, it was like that. It was like that. So in the end, I end up, they end up selling me in the summer to um, Bristol City for 500 grand. Now, Den Dennis was the manager then, so he said, look, Colin, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, I'm going to do my budget on you, 500 grand. He brought Ray out of Eld from Everton, 250. Yeah. And then he said, look, 500 grand, I'm bringing you in. I said, no, he did well for last year, he scored goals and went, just went to come down here, enjoy yourself. So I put myself, I also don't want me yet, crack on. And I remember I went, I went there with me and my brother. And considering I said, oh, my brother's gone with my agent. I ended up doing a deal myself, so I mean, <laughs> so I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not an easy job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I ended end up doing, doing my deal myself, me and my brother just like laughing and joking. I think my brother's there for the day out, man. <laughs> so yeah, so we, we've done that. And then um, I said, you know, I just want to play, go and play football. I mean, go there. Uh, and he, ju he just worked out really, really well for me. Uh, but I said, Dennis took the gamble on me and I've, I'm, I'm always uh, grateful for Dennis for, take, for taking a punt. I, I remember he said to me straight away, as soon as I signed, he said, look, I'm not going to stand in your way. Right. He said, you're too good for this level. But if a club comes in, offers me the right money, you can go straight away. Said, not a problem at all. So I said, all right, no problem. Play, do okay. Um, not an employee's coming. And I remember Dennis pulling me, I think it was a Friday, Friday before the game up. And he said to me, look, I'm gonna be honest with you, Nottingham Forest will come if you made a bid, yeah. He said, I can't sell you. And I said to him, why not? We kind of like got an agreement. He said, yeah, I know we have, but I brought you for 500 grand, yeah. They want to buy you for 500 grand. Mm. And also, I think I'll say that there's either 20 or 30% sell on. Mm. Yeah. He said, said Coley, I can't do it. So I said, oh, I understand it, I understand it, yeah. He said, they come in the right offer, he said, I will not send you away, you know that. Okay, not a problem. Go play. Uh, not too long after that, Dennis gets sacked. So I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do now? Oz takes over, Russell Osman. Real nice guy. Yeah. And I mean, real nice guy. He was a good player. I mean, watching when I was younger, play for England, Ipswich and that. And to work with him, play with him when I was at uh, Bristol City was absolutely brilliant. But Oz was brilliant with me. He was absolutely top sure. I remember him saying, look, Coley, nothing changes. If an offer comes in, I'm going to let you go. He said, we all know you're too good for this level. Yeah, so... What level is this? What, so what this is? was then... Is this uh, the third... Is this so it would have been League Two. So it's the third tier? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was no Premier League then. Yeah. So Arsenal were winning Division One then. So yeah, so it would have been a third tier. So I'm saying, all right, cool, not a problem. Newcastle come in, make a bid. Uh, and this time I, I knew nothing about it. Aussies try to track me down, but I'm doing my laundry. So I'm doing my laundry, yeah. I come out of my car and I got a message on my car. So I'm out thinking, oh, someone's trying to, I mean, wipe me up or something. Well, a message yeah. on your car? A message on my car. Some Don't forget, in those days, <laughs> mobile. Oh, no, no, no. mobiles. This is how we're doing transfers. I mean, they, they know mobiles <laughs> in those <laughs> days, yeah. So I come out, read the message. Um, 
Coley, it's Oz. Uh, can you get in touch with us? But I said, not a problem. So I get home from the laundry, call us. I said, what's that? He said, um, uh, we've a, basically we've agreed a fee with um, Newcastle. I said, oh, Newcastle. I said, mm, okay. And he says, me happy? I said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, you sure? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. He said, we wish I said, I'll do my laundry. <laughs> It's like only only you could be doing something like that. So I said, yeah. So I, I remember he said, right, Kevin Keegan's going to phone. So I said, okay, pool, not a problem. Kevin phones me and Kevin goes, hi, hi, is this um, Adrian? So I said, <laughs> Adrian? It's <laughs> yeah. a good start. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, no, it's Andrew. He goes, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is uh, Kevin Keegan here, managing new casting. And I said, oh, okay, yeah. Nice speech, blah, blah. He goes, um, we've agreed to deal with Bristol City and we'd like, like to come for a medical. Um, can you come up tonight? So I said to him, no, nah, I can't come up tonight and do my laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote to I said, no, I'm doing my laundry. <laughs> so I remember Kevin said to me, well, can you come up tomorrow? So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll come up tomorrow, I'll come up tomorrow. So I said, yeah, okay, not a problem. So in, in that time, I get some uh, some bits all packed up. I drive back to my my place in London. I mean, and try sorting out a few few bits and bobs. So as I'm at my, my apartment in London, chilling, um, got a shuttle up in the morning, I get a telephone call out the blue from uh, Paul Elliott. I'm saying myself, I still stop that. But our, our generation, we were always very respectful to our seniors. Yeah. You know, because that's where we were brought up. So like I said, get this phone call from Paul Elliott. He's like, Coley, it's Paul Elliott. Hi, okay, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Right, uh, I heard you're going to Newcastle. I know you've not got an agent. I've got someone who can help you with a deal. So I'm saying to myself, well, all right, cool, I'm respectful. It's Paul Elliott, man. I mean, you got to show respect to these kind of people. So he goes, okay, the guy's named Steve Waggett. He said, um, he helped you do the deal and he'll meet you tomorrow. So I said, yeah, fine, no problems. Fly out to Newcastle the uh, following morning. I meet Steve Waggett, blah, blah, blah. Fash out the deal, the deal's done. Boom. Sorted. Right, uh, right, Collie, um, for doing the uh, the transfer, I think thirty grand signed on. Feel got it's thirty grand. I'm none the wiser, so I said, "Hey, cool, no problem." Yeah. So boom, I never ever heard from that Steve Waggett again. Really? Never heard from him it's again. Mad. Yeah, yeah. Paul Elliott, I never heard from him again until a, a few years ago. I, I see him. Well, it's longer than a few few years ago because Cyril's been passed longer than a few years ago. And Cyril was always my, my idol. He was always my idol. Cyril Regis for those at yeah, home. Yeah, he was always my idol. So we, we was at Wembley. And um, we're in the room. And he walks in. And as soon as he walks in, I mean, I'm saying to myself, like, this is going off, you know. It's going off, I don't care. And I was, like, explaining it to Cyril. And, like, Cyril seemed me, like, on the edge over there. And he said, me, call, call. He said, no. He said, no. Please. He said, no. I said, no, he said, no, be respectful, do the right thing. And it was only because of Cyril, because I respected him so much, that it, it didn't go off. I mean, but in all that time, Paul Elliott never, ever picked the phone up to me. Throughout my career, now considering I played over 20 years, he never picked the phone up to say, look, Coley, this was the situation. You know I mean? Was there a problem with, like, rogue agents like that? Well, I, I, I didn't know because I, I never had one Because you did the deal at, was it Bristol on your Me own? and my brother, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then moving there, I didn't have an agent. Uh, so I thought, yeah, someone's trying to help me. My, my, one of my elder generation is trying to help mm. me. So I'm, I, I, like I said, I'm none the wiser. And I, I remember <laughs> Paul Elliott come out and said, in the end, you know what, Cole, he, 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 he done me as well. <laughs> what do you mean he done you? What, you didn't get none of the 30 grand? So that's why you're pissed. <laughs> there was nothing to do with him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> like absolutely zero involvement in anything. E exactly. Other than and giving you a phone call. There you go. So that, that that's how obviously my, my move to Newcastle went. And when Kevin found out, Kevin was like, nah, this can't happen. Yeah, that's mad oh, because man. the move's already happening. The move's already yeah. in motion. Like These guys have just it. jumped in yeah. once it, you're on the... There you go. <laughs> was but there any negotiation to get involved in anything? <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> sat there next year. The, 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 mad, the maddest thing was Foxy used him uh, when Foxy left Norwich to go to Newcastle and Foxy bumped him. So 
I was going to say what goes around. <laughs> the, 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 the rule, rule give you any of that back? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my biometric taste. Yeah. Did, um, you, uh, did you have any idea when you went to Newcastle, the sort of the attention, what it was going to be like with the fans and things like that? Because obviously you're just banging in goals. So the Geordies were going crazy for I'll, that. I'll be honest, I, I wasn't even going to go. I wasn't going to go. Cause I'm, I'm, I remember I'm, I'm big match with Lee Clark. And I remember saying to Clark, I said, Phew, Clark, yeah, man. I said, do you know how far it is? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm living in, in London and Bristol then. Okay. I'm like, Clark, do you know how far it is? And Clark is saying to me, Cody, just come, they love you, your score goes, and they're absolutely adore you. And all I kept saying to him, Clark, it's near to Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm like, because I'd, I'd never, ever been that far up north. Did your family move with you or anything? No, because I, I was basically, I was, I was in a relationship yeah, but I was still living by myself. Yeah, yeah, you know. So when I was living in London, I was living by myself. Even if I was in a relationship, and then I was in Bristol, uh, going back to London. So between Bristol and London, so I, I was always by myself then. So um, I, I kept saying, "Slim, Slim, it's too far." And Slim says to me, "No, no, Coley, Coley, you're okay. You're, I look after you." Obviously, Kevin as well was a big salesman, but then I'm not going to be spending time with Kevin off the football pitch. I'm going to train and do what I do. But off the pitch, I've got to be able to be able to do something. And Clarkie was absolutely brilliant. So I ended up signing then. For me personally, it, it was a great move. I know people say, oh, I don't, I don't talk about Newcastle and that. It was a great move. It was a fantastic move. The football there was pff, ridiculous. The support was absolutely phenomenal. But for me as an individual, I'm like, nah, it's not for me, all this support, all this adulation. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't do adulation. It's not, it's not something that I'm comfortable with because I see myself no different to anybody else, but I've, I've just been given a talent that, yeah, I can score goals every now and then. That's a talent though. Man. So when people like give you all this adulation, I find it very, very uncomfortable. I think as I've got older, it's like, yeah, I start the game now. But when I was younger, I'm like, nah, nah, this, this is not my cup of tea. Was it w weird, not weird, because nowadays, obviously, everyone's got a phone, everyone's got, how, was it more on top with like paparazzi and things like that back then? Yeah, and, uh, especially back, back then, like young footballers yeah. coming through and stuff. And, and especially being in Newcastle as well, because Newcastle is, is so passionate. They're passionate about their football, and if you're number nine, oh my God, if mm. you score goals up there, it's over. Mm. And I mean, it's proper over. The adulation they give you as a number nine, because the number nine up there is the icon shirt. Mm. You score goals at Newcastle, and you play that number and nine And you did shirt. score goals. You scored a lot of goals. I think you had most goals in the Premier League campaign with 34 in 40 appearances, which was huge. You won PFA Young Player of the Year in 94, 94? 93, 94. 93, 94. Yeah. Um, fastest to 50 Premier League goals. Do you know how many appearances? 65 appearances. Okay. Um, I love that. You know, if I, you know, I would know every goal I scored, every stat, every, I'd just be like, yeah, I, I yeah. know about how many goals. I know, that was 15, 65. Yeah. Very cool. But you, the, the records and the goals that you were scoring at that point was unbelievable, just as at the start of the Premier League era as well. Like, when the Premier League started, did you feel the change or the shift towards like this new era of football as well? For me, not really, cause I, I didn't know any better. Uh, don't forget, I'm, I'm playing what, Division Three football, uh, Division One football. Because don't forget, when Newcastle got promoted, yeah, first season of the Premier League, yeah. Yeah, second tier. So I've had um, moving into the Premier League. I didn't know what to expect because I'm thinking it's no different than League One, but which, which mm. it was then, your Division One. Then so I'm saying myself going to the Premier League. I'm like everybody else who was at Newcastle. But just go out there and have a ball in it. Just enjoy it because we don't know what to expect. So when when I do go there and like I'm fortunate to do what I'm doing, I'm like, well, I'm, like I'm playing with my mates. Mm -hmm. That's all I was doing. I'm playing with my mates. I'm out there. I'm enjoying. I'm not even thinking. You know, Kevin's just saying that. Oh, you know, get the ball to Cole in the box and he'll score goals. Just wherever you want him, just tell him to get in the box and he'll score goals. So I'm like, I was gonna keep running in the box because the team was built for me. Mm. I remember he got rid of um, Dave Kelly. Uh, I think Ned went to Leicester. He played after with that. Beardsley as well, right? Yeah, Peter coming after. So I remember when he got rid of Ned and he said to me, I'll call him, I'm getting rid of Ned. I'm like, no, nah, me and Ned had a great partnership. Then the season when Newcastle got promoted, I got 12 in 12. He said, oh, I'm getting rid of him. He said, I'm, I've got someone just for you. I'm like, who could be better than Ned? I got Peter Beardsley. So I'm like, oh, wow, Peter Beardsley. 
big Ed Meyer been winning it obviously. Did he go from Europe United to Newcastle? No, he, he was at United stage, uh, when he was younger. When he was yeah, younger, yeah. then he went, was it, I think he went Liverpool, Ever not Ever. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. he even went to the yeah. States, was it? Um, yeah, he did a little. You no? Know? So, yeah, so when Peter came in, it was, for me personally, it, it was a knowledge of football. I mean, I'm, I'm young then, and I'm still raw. And it's what people fail to understand. I'm, I'm, I'm raw. I've had loan periods at uh, Fulham, Bristol, signed for Bristol full time, go to Newcastle, mm. get 12 in 12. I've not had a full season yet. Yeah. yeah. I've got to Newcastle. I play with Peter Beardsley for one season. Yeah. The next season, I'm moving to January. So really, I've only had a season and a half in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when I first went there and I'm playing with Peter, and Peter said, I oh, could just stand still. I'm like, for all my years when I'm younger, no coach ever said to me, stand still. Everyone said, you got to move, you got to move. Yeah. Peter said, Harko, just stand still. You still get the ball. I'm like, I've never heard that before. <laughs> yeah, so I just stood still. I couldn't stop getting the ball. <laughs> I'm like, bro. Every coach always said, you got to move, you got to move. I said, I'll just stand still, you'll get, I'll get you the ball. I'm like, stand still, I'll get the ball. I'm like, wow. But my, my knowledge was starting to become even better than, but like I said, you know, I'm, I'm still raw, I'm still learning the game. So by the time I get to Newcastle and then I leave Newcastle, I think everyone's had this perception that I've been in the Premier League like three years or something. It's banging I've been in the Premier League a year and a half. That's, all, that's how long I was in the Premier League, playing League One football, yeah, and then League Three football. It's a big jump. What, what, a, what a start though in the Premier League, what a season and a half. I just wanted to ask you about going to Manchester United. When did you first find out? Was it another note on your car? Same, you know, I, 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 I <laughs> always he's in fear. I, I always want to go go to Man United. And I always said to my agent at the time, I said, if I'm going to leave Newcastle, I'm, I'm only going to want to. I'm going to Man United. It's as simple as that. I remember, I, obviously, I got in England squad a few times. And I, I used to get on well at that time with Incy. And he always used to, like, we used to phone each other. He said, oh, the manager. He fancies you, wants to come to United. I said to him, I used to say Ince at the time, no chance. There's no chance. Kevin Key could never, ever sell me to Man United. He said, yeah, most probably not, but I'm just letting you know that the manager fancies you. So I was thinking, yeah, it's, it's never going to materialise. It's nice to know that, I mean, the manager fancies you once you go to Man United, but I know it's never going to materialise. Yeah. So when it did happen, I mean, people say, oh, do you think about it? I said, I, d I didn't think about it like that because I know football then. Yeah. If a manager no longer wants you at a football club, why are you staying? It's no different to mm. a relationship. Yeah. I mean, if you decide you're going to split up with somebody or someone decides to split up with you, they don't want you anymore. So why are you trying to stay somewhere if someone doesn't want you anymore? So when Kevin made that decision that he was going to sell me, I made my mind, OK, cool, you don't want me here anymore. I've always wanted to go to Man United. Man United is my team. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. You know, it's now... Throughout the years, Newcastle supporters, well, not all of them, some go, oh, you forced to do... I didn't force anything. You know, let, let's get things right. I've, I've never forced anything in, in my life. Ultimately, Kevin made a, made a decision. It was £6 million, uh, Keith Gillespie at that time. It's good money. Kevin decided that he wanted to move things on. He said to me, I remember him saying to me, you go to Man United, you'll win things. You become a better player and you're guaranteed to win things. And that's the way it worked out for me. I become a better player, and I was fortunate to win things. It's mad that certain Newcastle fans look at it like you forced that through, but they were literally challenged Keegan, didn't they? They went down to the yeah. ground and said, "Why are you selling Andy Cole? We're not a selling club." I remember yeah, watching yeah. on the telly, yeah. and he defended it, and he said, "This is my plan." You know, so it's obviously his decision mm, because he said he, it. You didn't want to go. As well. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he said it to the fans. He said, "Look, you got to trust me, basically." Yeah, and in in the end, after he did that, because he ended up buying Les. And yeah, Newcastle did change the way to play. I mean, obviously getting more balls in the box. Obviously, Les is a totally different player to me, you know. But he 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 just made his mind up that right. Newcastle was kind of like becoming predictable. Okay. You know, well, everything was. It was my team basically. It was it was built for me to score as many goals as possible. Now we're going to stop Coley from scoring goals. Where Newcastle's goals going to come from? It was one of those kind of things. So he he decided to move me on. I decided to go, and as I say, the rest is history. What was it like? I, remember, I think I remember reading this in your book about the difference in being at Newcastle United, like in the change rooms where Fergie was with you. If like the team, you know, at Newcastle, sometimes you'd have a good first half, you might not be winning, and Kevin Keane would be like, oh, you know, well done, keep going. Come to United, 
and Fergie's got a bit of a different attitude. You get a little bit more angry sometimes if things were going that way. It was a bit of a shock, I think. Yeah, it was a, it was an eye-opening experience for me. Obviously, going to Man United, and coaches are different. I mean, um, I think when you go into a, a, a dress room that has been there in many internationals and whatever, you know, uh, it's totally different to obviously what I'd come from at Newcastle. Newcastle just got themselves in, into the Premier League and starting to understand it. Whereby Man United would be trying to win the Premier League then. Yeah. You know, experienced players and, you know, the manager was a different kind of manager. Um, Kevin was an individual that you play, you win, he's on top of the world. You play, you lose, snake's belly. Right. So it was very up and down, so you you, you didn't know how to gauge him. I mean, it'd be an individual that if you won on a Saturday, Monday, be absolutely buzzing around the place. You know, if you lost Monday, snake's belly. So that that transcends right the squad, yeah. yeah. So as as squad as a squad player, you're going in and say, "Oh, yeah, what's the manager going to be like?" And I'm, I'm, I remember Venice was Venice was there, and like them two were always at loggerheads. Really? Venice and Keegan, yeah, because like he, Kevin's like roller coaster. And Venice, who had been at Liverpool, was not used to that roller coaster it's stuff. I mean, yeah. yeah, he was not used to that. He said, you know, one minute he's up, next minute he's down. He's like, but what's he transmitting to us? Mm. <laughs> but came mean. across in it on the obviously the interview, the yeah. famous interview as remember, well. Remember even the, uh, you know, remember when he left England and yeah. lost against Germany, and he, he just kind of retired in the rain on the side. He kind of yeah. said it's that. Like, it's very he, emotional. Like, he said, I, I can't do this. He's probably <laughs> the only England manager who's ever actually yeah, admitted. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I might not be up to the job. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's an emotional manager. He's a very, very emotional. But that I, must be good when it's good. Oh, when, when it's going well, yeah. yeah. But what, like I said, when when you're you're losing or you've lost the game or whatever, he was he was, he was so up and down. I, I remember the disagreement that actually started this all off, and. We've been travelling, and in those days, yeah, we went from there wasn't like no train or planes and all those kind of things. We didn't do that then. So I remember we did a coach trip from Newcastle to Southampton. That's, that's a trip, right? That's yeah. a trek. <laughs> we played the game, uh, end up losing in, in some game as well. To be fair, end up losing the game, and then we went from from Southampton to London, where we was playing. I think we were playing Wimbledon in the League Cup. Yeah. And I, I've virtually played all the games, and I'm, I'm starting to feel it now. Like I said, I, man, I'm, I'm really, I'm really ex inexperienced, and I'm starting to feel it now. I mean, I remember we come out for a warm down, uh, what well, warm down, short training, and I'm like some time walking on the pitch. I remember Kevin saying to me, oh, "Coley, Coley, do you, um, you fancy it this morning?" I'm, I'm honest. I said to him, "To be honest, I, I don't fancy it this morning." I remember he said, "Well, if you don't fancy it, you, you can fuck off." <laughs> Okay, not a problem to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I mean, sound. I turned round, got showered, packed my bag, and I was gone. I was gone. I, I, I just went home. I Were mean, you thinking again? This, is this just you going home for the day, or did you think this was bigger than that? This, this is me. I'm, I'm turning around saying, no, I'm done here, you know. Right. Okay. I'm done. I'm, what are you talking to me? If, if, if you ask me a question, yeah, I'm going to be very honest with you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You ask me if I'm a fancy today. I'm turning around and say, no, I don't. Yeah, if you're going to address me like that, I'm to around saying to myself, well, you've asked me a question, I'm being honest. Why are you addressing me like that? So mm -hmm. I just said, I'm done, you know, packed my bag, uh, went home. Are, are you just like that in general? Or were you so supremely confident in your ability that you didn't really care what anyone else no, it, it, you it, kind of knew you'd be all right? It, it wasn't that. Um, I, I, I think that the, the way I've been brought up here, just be respectful. Mm. I mean, that's, that's the way I've been brought up. So when people talk to me a certain way, I turn and say, oh, okay. Okay, so now it looks like we've got a problem going on here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so instead of me, like, when I was young, instead of me turning around and saying, no, come, let's come to log ahead, I'll turn around and say, oh, I'll just go, yeah? yeah? And then you ain't got a problem with me anymore because once I lose it, I've, I've lost it. Yeah, yeah. So I just pack my bag and I go. So I remember mean, when I've done that, it's like, bro, Cody's actually gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm only doing what you told me to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, I, I remember I, I didn't play in the League Cup game. I was missing for about three days. And then they said to me, like, you've you got to come back now. You've got to come back. I'm like, I might come back. No way. They said, oh, obviously the way Kevin spoke, but I don't need to accept that. And I, I always, my logic was, if my parents don't talk to me like that, you can't talk to me like that. Yeah. I mean, I that, and that was my logic when I was younger. You yeah. Don't, 
No, if my parents sent me to do something, I'd do it. But if my parents said, oh, what's what I was saying? Yeah, you're my parents. But if my parents don't talk to me in that manner, how can I let someone else talk to me like that? Mm-hmm. So when I, t- when I walked out and that, they said, Cole, you need to come back. And I was like, I'm coming back nowhere. <laughs> they said, Cole, you need, to, you need to come back. We need to sort this out. So I went back and uh, Freddie Shep was the chairman. He was, he was no longer with us. I remember he had to go around his house and Kevin was there and we had to sit down and have a chat and that. And at that time, Newcastle were giving out contracts as like some of the senior pros and that. And like, I'm absolutely smashing it and they didn't talk to me about a contract. So in the end, I turned around and said, well, like, Cole, we'll give you a new four-year contract as well, you know what I mean? Bust this down the carpet, get yourself ready for Saturday. We played Wimbledon on the Saturday as well, I ended up scoring as well. And I hadn't trained for like three days, something like that. Playing on the Saturday, scored the Saturday. And I thought, yeah, phew, it's all done and dusty, let's just get on with things. I mean, but it, with, with, with Kevin, Kevin like totally different again with, um, with, with uh, Sir Alex. Kevin holds grudges. Right. So Kevin couldn't let it go. So you could tell. Yeah. You knew that something shifted. Yeah. And he, he as he couldn't let it go, it's like what opportunity had come up. I don't know how he found out from um, Joe Rule that there was a problem at, at Newcastle with me and Kevin. That's how the manager actually found out. Joe Rule must have tipped him. I was thought, um, Kevin's prepared to sell me. I know he went in, tried to speak to Frank Clark that day at Nottingham Forest. Frank Clark had left, left uh, Nottingham Forest for the day, tried to <laughs> tried punt. Yeah, okay, yeah, boom. Deal was done. So it was kind of like that, how the done, deal was done in the end. So he actually, he was trying to just tell you to... No, he, he was he was basically... Trying to get older, Fergie. Yeah. Right. I, I think uh, what what I understand was Joe tipped him off that me and uh, Kevin had a problem. Right. The manager tried to get uh, Stan. Stan had gone. Didn't think at that time he'd be able to get me. Uh, Frank had gone for the day. Tried his luck with Kevin at Newcastle. It's like, it's like Frank had gone yeah. for the day. He couldn't go to Frank Clark. I mean, yeah, then, yeah, basically, yeah. Because of that, we You get. can do the deal. So I can. I want Keith Gillespie. Deal is done. I'll never forget getting home from school and seeing the, the paper with signed Andy Cole. I just couldn't believe it. I was like ringing my friends on the house. I was like, we've got Andy yeah. Cole. It was, yeah. it was so surreal because no one saw it coming. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was like, true. you know, you've been banging him in for Newcastle and it's like, why has this happened? And I was watching the news and all the Newcastle fans outside the office and Keegan going mad. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. The first, the first half a season for you didn't really go amazing. No, it was tough. Compared yeah. to, it was tough. How, how did, did, could you feel the levels had risen a little bit or you, know, you just it, found it difficult? It wasn't even the, the levels of, of risen. I, I, I knew what the Premier League was about then. It was expectations. Expectations. I remember um, Chris Sutton, Went for the same fee. Well, I went for a million pound more, and say went from Norwich to Blackburn. No one spoke about it. Yeah, and I mean, no one spoke about it. I mean, being at uh, Manchester United for six million, you'd have believed it's a hundred and six million. I mean, oh, Andy Cole's there. Yeah, Andy Cole, uh, richest footballer in soccer history. I'm like, well, that's when I play my football. You know, just <laughs> let me get my head down. And that everything I'd done was magnified. Mm. So basically, that kind of like, that was kind of like getting in my head. I'm like saying to myself, I oh, hold on, what I hold on do is play for, we'll get my head down. But being at Manchester United, it doesn't work like that. Mm. It doesn't work like that. And it took me a, a little bit of time to realise it doesn't work like that. You, you don't have that bedding in period at Man United because everyone expects you to hit the ground running, especially the media. I mean, I, I, and I think that's that's where my um, relationship with the media will really start to turn. And I'm turning around and saying to myself, you people are not judging me on obviously what I'm doing football wise now. You people are sort of talk personal now. Or what they think about like yeah. it might be personally. Exactly. And I'm telling myself, myself, well, we can talk about football, you can say I'm, I'm rubbish or not. Nah, that's by the It's but not when, true, but you can yeah, say Yeah. <laughs> but when you start to get a little bit personal, I'm telling myself, well, it's cool by me, you know, but don't expect me to talk to you next week. I used to notice that as because I was I'm a bit younger than Jay and I, I used to notice the difference between the way you were spoken about and the way, and it used to annoy me because obviously as a Man United fan, I was a proper geek at school about everything. And like the way other English strikers used to get spoken about in comparison to you, it used to rock my head because I'd see you performing against Juventus and Barcelona. No other English striker was doing it in Europe. I see you lifting titles in FA Cups. No other English striker was really doing that. Maybe Teddy next to you, but 
like you were never really given that regard. You never got to play for England as uh, as much. That, and that used to really piss me off as a fan. How did that <coughs> make you feel? Because you're the guy that's banging in those goals. You must feel that. At, at the time, it, it never bothered me. I'll, I'll be very, very honest. It, it never bothered me. I just got my head down and continued to do what, what I wanted to do because I ain't got time to play your games. My games have been played with me. If I can keep my respective manager happy and my teammates happy, I'm I'm more than happy. Whatever people are saying about me, well, you, you're entitled to say just that. It's not, I, I, I look at it now, and it, as I'm older, I look back and say to myself, and I, I said, I think yesterday, I did something yesterday, I said, what they talk about all these current strikers and whatever, does none of them have done something that I've not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? But the way they gas all these strikers now is like, Oh. Am yeah. I, I'm a different planet also. Yeah. Because the way you want to be talking about me is, is oh, I'm lucky. I'm well, there was someone that's tweeted that the other... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. and, and, it was quite rare for you to publicly sort of speak out. Yeah. And it sort of, it got a lot of attention on Twitter and it was trending. And I it was it. great because everyone, all United fans were like, look, look at this record, 187 goals, you know, didn't take penalties, won a lot. Because there was a tweet about Nunes missing some yeah. chances to score and it's comparison with you and you were like you basically responded to it and said listen I don't play that game I've won this I've done exactly. that I'm and you life. know the only reason I did that yeah I was speaking with my, with, with my boy and he said to me oh dad I said what's that he said oh, <laughs> this guy on Twitter yeah yes. <laughs> this guy on Twitter and I, I said to him like oh it's nonsense yeah and to take it down or something like that yeah and he said oh the guy was acting a bit moody on it so I said alright all right, one thing knows I ain't got time for that nonsense, really. So when I went on Twitter, because I go on Twitter every now and then, and even if they block my account now for whatever reason, but yeah, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, his, yeah. his account back on. Exactly. So I, I go on Twitter now and I look here and I'm saying to myself, Raw, what's, what's this all about? I said, okay, then let, let, let me reply. Like I said, really, I don't bother with all this nonsense. I, I, I reply. Yeah, and like, like I said, like, I, I don't play these games. I'm a big man, you know. Yeah. I don't play these games, but I've just got to start putting people. In Can I read what you now. said? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You said, sorry, Dave. Worded wrongly right, yeah. or rightly, people need to stop disrespecting my name because I don't play the game. Just a quiet guy getting on with life. People think they can disrespect me. Look at the numbers and compare them to anyone else. There was, there was another one as well where you sort of mentioned... And you, about Men Christmas. lie, women <laughs> lie, numbers don't. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Exactly. About um, it's Christmas, the festival season. I'm happily retired. <laughs> Five Premier League, two FA courts, one league court, one Champions League, gold boot, young player here, 187 Premier League goals, one pan. Life is what you make it. <laughs> It's not bad, is it? <laughs> exactly. So I, to, to yeah, this day, I, argue I, with I mean, I don't know why people still want to be trying to come for me. Yeah. And I, I, I said, I, I kick back, I chill out, I don't get involved with all this nonsense. I, I'm just doing me and enjoying my role at Man United. All. And when, when things like this keep cropping up, I turn around and say to myself, why, why do people want to do this seriously? Why? Hollow was a big part of that, though. Yeah, yeah. I know you mentioned the media. Yeah, he, yeah, Remember when Glenn Hollow with that four yeah. or five chances thing? Yeah, he, he started it. He, he started all this notion. And one, once he started that notion, the media have hung on to it as if, like, yeah, for their life. I mean, oh, yeah, well, yeah, Glenn's right. Glenn is our leader and Glenn's right. And, you know, as from there on in, we're going to write about Andy Cole as, oh, he's not as good as blah, blah, blah. He's not as good as blah, blah, blah. He's not as good. And these are the reasons why. And you turn around and say, so these are the reasons why. So if these are the reasons why, how have I actually got to these numbers that I've got to? And then if I had scored penalties or taken penalties, my number would have been a lot more than what it ended up being. But if, if you see when people write about me, they never ever mention that I don't take penalties. No. Mm. So people might look at it and say, well, yeah, if I took penalties, yeah, I'm over 200 Premier League goals. Mm -hmm. And some of the boys turn around and say to me now, I say, Cody, why don't you take penalties? And I always say, I always believe that if I couldn't score goals in open play, I'm not good enough. That's my notion. And that's, that's me. What anyone else wants to do, that's, that's fine, but that's me. Yeah, so that is me actually turning around and saying to myself, are you going to be good enough to play at this level? Yeah? But like I said, everyone wants to question me. It's like a lot of the records that are coming up now. I, as I sit here now, I didn't even know yeah, that majority of I'm either at the top or within the top three. Mm. But these records have only come out recently because people are going to get close to them and surpass them. So once people uh, get close or surpass them, they ain't talking about me. Yeah. They're talking about the individual who surpassed yeah. them. You turn around and say to yourself, 
is that the way it's supposed to be? It was so stupid as well because it didn't make any sense what like Holler was saying and stuff like that because he scored 187 goals. <laughs> he's, like, he's saying you scored would have scored a thousand if you've taken all your chances. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You would have scored what was it instead of 34 in a season, it would have been 200 in a season. Like, exactly, it's nonsense. Exactly, and anyone who like actually looks at it and goes that doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's never made sense. But like I said, they've hung on to it. <laughs> you know, being retired a long time, they're, they're still hanging on to stupid things and. Excuse me. That, that's why I, I question things. I tell myself, myself, well, it's not about what I achieved. It, it, this is more personal now, because like, like you know, they come out of top ten Premier League goal scores, uh, right? One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. No, you you can't erase me. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're no. not realised, you can't erase me. So you might say one, two, three, four. Yeah, if you don't want to talk about, tell myself we don't want to talk about. It. Yeah, but you can't turn around and say it was one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. There is four in there as well, but it's what? because it's, it's me. Yeah. And that's why I, I, I laugh so much now because I look at it and say, so it's either you guys have got a complex about me and what my achievements are because it's not me because I and can't be erased now. And then you look at the way they speak about, like, I think he's an ama- I think he's a world class striker, but you look at the way some the people talk about Harry Kane now. Who obviously scores a lot of goals, he does really well. But again, I re- reiterate, you were doing it against Barca, against Juve, against all these big teams in the Champions League as well. And I think a lot of people never really appreciated that. Mm. Like, since what? Well, who's the only other striker to win, English striker to win everything? Rooney and you. Yeah, I see that. That's it. Like, th- that's it. No, no. Like, Shearer never done that. The chat about him like he did. Kane never done that. The chat about him like he did. But I think the the numbers and the achievements, you got both of them. And yeah, I don't, I don't think most of most of the strikers have got that. Do you think there is an element that you don't play that game? You don't. Hundred percent. You don't go on Sky Sports talking about yourself and 100%. like some of us do. Yeah, like Mika Richards yeah. talks about his goal on like, Sky Sports and the like FA Cup. Like, like, yeah. the scene and <laughs> and all that stuff that Keno put him about. But you sort of get on, like you said, get on with your life, living your life, doing what you want to do. 100%. Not playing that game. Yeah, that, that, there's, there's no point in playing that game because I, I, I only sit here in Nani's position, yeah, with the players I played with. I don't talk about, oh, yeah, well, I scored 187 goals in the Premier League. How'd you do it? Well, my teammates. And I always say, I'm a t- I was always a team player. It's not about individual things. Oh, I've got to win the golden boot every single season, but finish fourth. <laughs> what, because you've got a golden boot, but you're finishing fourth. Yeah, well, that's four golden boots. I couldn't give a F what they are. Yeah. I mean, you start the season out, try to be the best team in the league. Yeah, it's a team thing. So by the time you finish the league, you've won the league, you've all got trophies. You're going to be remembered by what you achieve, not individually, but as a team. So when people talk about, oh yeah, but he got all these goals, he said, where'd you finish? I, I don't sit there and talk about, yeah, well, this season I got 24, really I should have got 30. Did you win the league? Yeah, we won the league. Okay. Well, did you win the FA? Yeah, we won the FA Cup. For me, that, that's what it's all about. It's not about my personal goals. Personal goals? And what? In, and in 96, you did lift the Premier League and the FA Cup. How did it feel to lift that first league title like the Premier special. League special yeah. special 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 I think, I think you, growing up as a kid you, you want to be at that level to whereby you're competing to win things I think when when I won the first one it was like hard work I mean lots of ups and downs but that's what it's all about it's the feeling that you always want to try and go back and feel again definitely. were you ingrained into that kind of Fergie mentality of I want the next one. No yeah, one. Or were you already in that mind frame, or did you? Hundred percent. Because what well, people thought I understand is well, when I, when I joined Man United in '95, yeah, the January it was only what a few months to the end of the season. So the next season, I've basically come to class in '92. Yeah. So that's the mentality I'm, I'm coming into the club with. So I've ended up basically playing my career with those guys. Cause like I said, four months. Yeah, those guys were uh, either getting in, playing a few games, or on the bench, or whatever. So really, that's that's the era I grew up with mm. and playing with. I mean, because '95 January you're joining, like I said, you got. You'll never w- win season. anything with kids within '95, yeah. isn't it? So. <laughs> you know, and I'm I'm I remember that game because I uh, had a op uh, that summer, and they were looking for me to get medically cleared to play against Villa, and I didn't get cleared, and we ended up losing the game three one. Yorkie scored, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, and Hansen said you'll never win in- anything with kids, and then end that season we end up winning the league. So yeah, as. A, uh, 
as a player that had just been brought to Manchester United, when you see Ince, because you said you had a good relationship with him, and all these guys leave and the youngers come through, were you as were you confident that you could still you could go on and win that double, or did you think, well, it's I mean, going to take a while to change? Or and end the season, he was one of those ones. Because when I signed it in, in January, the manager never said to me, right, I'm looking to move Vince here on, I'm looking to move Sparky on, Andre. So I'm thinking to myself, yeah, these are the guys I'm going to play with. So when they did move on, I'm like, bro, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I already knew about uh, Butty, Scolzi, Nevs, and all that, Bex and whatever, but they all coming at the same stage, so I wasn't expecting that. I mean, but like I said, for me, it was like, I'm going to a new club, I don't know what to expect anyway. Mm. You know, so when they made a big change in the summer, it's like, get your head down and then get on with it. It was there was it was weird because obviously it wasn't back to back titles ninety six ninety seven ninety eight you had a great individual season I think you scored twenty eight goals mm. around that but we obviously missed out then Dwight York comes in ninety nine season did, when York came in did you know that it was there any inclination like did Fergie say to you you two are gonna play together this is gonna did I know I, I I knew that um, if if Patrick Cliver has signed for <laughs> Manchester United instead of Barcelona I most would have moved on that's All what right. I did know. Uh, I think at the time, you try to bring Pat in. Uh, Pat m was leaving Milan. Yeah, I remember him um, doing the medical and stuff because uh, I wanted Patrick Cliver to come yeah. to United. And I remember when we got York from Villa, I was like, oh, man, this guy I from remember, Villa. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? I remember yeah. when we played Barcelona, everyone was singing to Cliver, you should have signed for a big club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so Pat, Pat went to uh, Barca. Um, and then I, I, I wasn't in the team, couldn't get a game. Uh, Yoki played with Oli, Teddy, Giggsy, Scolzi. And then um, we played Southampton at the Old Dell. I remember it was like yesterday, come in, a bit of pre-match manager, said the team is right, blah, blah, blah. And I call this and that. Cody's, Cody's playing today, blah, blah, blah. So, so, well, I just said myself, like, I'm just going to go out and enjoy it. You know, we, the manager at the time didn't see anything, but I just got in and enjoy it. Me and Yorkie never did anything in training. We played opposite teams. I mean, it was either England versus the rest of the world, uh, all that kind of stuff. Never, ever played right. on the same team. So we got there, and what you saw on that day, yeah, was what me and Yorkie were as a partnership. Was it a black shirt that day? Yeah. It was yeah. a black shirt, innit? it? It's in my head. Yeah, all then, black. Yeah. Trust me, I was, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember that. That was a kit that was. So there was day. no, you say you played, you didn't Nothing. practice together before that, there was, because that Nothing. sort of relationship just seemed to gel straight away. Nothing whatsoever. Did you get on well before yeah, yeah, you yeah. built that partnership? Yeah, well, I, I, I'll be honest, yeah. In, if we had a night out ever seeing wherever it was, if it's in Birmingham, Manchester, or whatever, London, whatever, yeah. In passing, in politeness, yeah, you okay? Yeah. Keep doing whatever you're doing at Villa, keep doing whatever you do at Man United, and that was it. Everything's nice and polite, you know. But a relationship like the relationship we had at Manchester United, where I become real good friends, no. So when you come to Man United, I was the first one, and this is what people like felt to understand. I was the first one who was staying at the, um, the Edge Hotel. Okay. I mean, when I got to see him, in the end, I found out that Bozzy, Bozzy told me that like, basically York was coming to Man United. I went to his hotel, met him at his hotel. I mean, uh, took him out, took him out of my house for dinner, uh, took him out in Manchester, we go cut your hair, look for a house, all those kind of things. Now people most of the look and say, oh, why, why would you do that? It's coming to take your spot kind of thing, you know? I'm saying, it didn't bother me. Yeah. It didn't bother me. I, I, I remember uh, last time we played a charity match, Rude and Rude play, and mm. I was speaking to Rude after, and Rude said to me, Coley, I'd like to say a big thank you to him. I'm like, what's happening, bro? He said to me, look, when I come to Manchester United, you, you welcome me with open homes. I said, that, that is me. If someone comes to Manchester United, my mentality, if someone comes to Manchester United and takes my place, it can only make them better. It can only, well, I'm not going to sit there, yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed I'm not going to be playing, but if we get to the end of the season, 38 games, if we won the league and I've got a trophy, I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. You know? So that's exactly what I, what I did with Yorkie. I mean, just play. Come in, enjoy yourself, mate. And it's as simple as that. One of the, there was so many iconic goals of you both. There was the one in Europe as well, though, with the the focus celebration. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> so um, Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah. yeah I, New Camp, wasn't it? I, it was... I was never the biggest trainer. I was never the biggest trainer. I remember we trained the night before. Um, I was putting on my Mister Band train, doing something I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> and I, I remember the manager screaming at me, "Cole, focus, focus." 
And I said to myself, yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember saying to the boys that if I score tomorrow, I'm going to run over to the focus sign. I mean, and they said, yeah, all right, then call it. If you do this, do that. So if you notice when I score and I run over, everyone starts yeah. running over to the focus sign and as well. You kind of do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah so that, that, that's what that was. Because like I said, the, the night before, I'm, I said, messing about in training for me was, I think that's where I relaxed even more. Because training was, sometimes was too intense for me, man. I just had a weird memory, yeah. You used to celebrate like this a lot, innit? Yeah. I copied that stuff, you know. Was that, <laughs> was that just a natural reaction? Yeah, that yeah, just, yeah, that's just a natural reaction. Because I remember you that, running away yeah. like that a lot, and I just, I don't know, I just thought, I remember my mate, because my mate Tyrell used to pretend to be Andy Cole. Yeah. And I used to pretend to be Beckham, I had the first <laughs> <laughs> And those were the days for me when we used to uh, link up and that. Um, yeah, obviously that that was iconic, and you, you had the goal in the against Juventus as well in the semi, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, people just, talk about that. Just as, uh, was it Cole, was it York who got fouled? York who got, got fouled. fouled. It was like yeah. full speed ahead of Barcelona. Yeah, but the game was over, and I, I, I will always live, live by that. The game was over, and we was going through on the way gone. I was fortunate to get a tap in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just scoring or winning the stand the yeah, out there. Was, was Nothing to that. There was the uh, the goal against Spurs as well in the in how the league. Your hamstrings for that goal, by the way. Yeah, the, the you, lob. Yeah, the yeah. lob. Your hammies must be good, man. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> decent well, hammies to be fair. Yeah. What was that like scoring that one? Because obviously, you know, we needed to win that game, and Spurs took the lead. We get an equaliser from Beckham. I think you kick, as well, yeah, yeah you come yeah. on. And then yeah, you get I, that I think winner as well. Fo- football, is, football is circles. Life's a circle. Uh, people might go back to obviously West Ham when we didn't win the league night and find say, oh Andy Cole cost Man United the league. Oh, he had all these chances. Chance, yeah, goalkeeper made some good saves. The goalkeeper was doing his job. I was trying to do my job. It didn't work out. Uh, turn around ninety nine. I'm fortunate to get the winner. You know, so my my focus then was like, boom, right, there you go. You come on. Double, double, double pissed off that I, I wasn't playing. <laughs> and I, I remember when the manager left me on, on the Saturday, I'm like, nah, me and the manager going into this. He said, Cole, you don't matter, you're not playing. I'm not changing my mind. And I'm trying to like put in every reason why I should be. He said, Cole, I'm not changing my mind. So yeah. it's like one of those ones. Was that because of the cup finals on the way or was uh, it just a tactical thing? Or? I, I don't even know. I think Teddy was off going through a, a decent patch as well at the moment. The manager thought my form was up and down. I, 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 mean, I look back now, you, you turn and say, yeah, I, I get it because I end up going on and getting, getting a winner. So, But at the time, you don't get it because the season was so big. It was a massive season. You know, we'd all contributed so much. We got to the last game of the season. You won every play and then you find out you're not playing. It's like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. absolutely devastated. You know, but I, I remember, obviously, him leaving me out and Yap didn't play either. So um, I said to Yap, because me and Yap was up on the back, sitting down on the bench, and I said, I said to you, yeah, I said, yeah, you know, if, if I score today, you know, if I come on, if I score, I'm going to run over to the bench and celebrate with you. So he said, I didn't call, let's do that. So when I come on, walked in the dressing room, manager, manager just said, right, call you going on. I'm like, what do you mean I'm going on? I mean, I, I didn't, I'll didn't be honest. Expect you at yeah, I, I didn't expect, but I didn't think we was playing that bad. You know, we got ourselves back in it. Beck's got ourselves back in it. I thought, he goes, right, you're going on. I tell you, you're coming off. I'm like, all right, then, no problems. So we got out, I didn't do a warm-up, to be fair. I wasn't really big on warm-ups either. Uh, How did that happen, that goal? <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know, man. I remember his centre, whatever happened, boom, boom, boom. Nev takes his right foot, comes on the left, clips it. I just go in short, spinning long. I mean, I've I played against Sol numerous times. We've been, been big mates ever since we played a thing. But I, I know Sol, I know he likes to get up. I know he likes to push up, you know what I mean? Because he's mm. quick, he's strong, he's powerful. So I take him short, I go in behind him, and then like I said, I, I pull it down, it bounces, and I see walks just come a little bit, and I just basically dinked it over him. Um, I'd even make it over to Yak, I'm sprinting over to Yak to celebrate. <laughs> I think he's, he's either gigs you or then collars me and like starts choking with my shirt. Remember that. You know? <laughs> uh, and that, that for me, that was, that was a real special, special feeling due to the fact that he's gone to the last game of the season. You know, he shouldn't have gone there. Mm. You know, shouldn't have gone there, but we've gone there, we've won it. You know, we were nervy in the end, but for me to gone and won the championship that day was such a special, special feeling. And it was only after, years after that, people, I've actually turned around and said myself, there you go, football's a cycle. Mm. What they say about you in, in 95, you know, you, you get to 95. Did that affect you in 95? Or, because you seem to be very, someone that positive, negative, you kind of just brush it off. Yeah, I, like, I think did that, that affect, because it was early in your United career. Yeah, you know, you know the craziest thing was then as well, yeah, why, why it 
kind of like affected me a little bit because my son was born that year. So we played Southampton at Old Trafford. Uh, I was in London all day. I went down from London. I think it was a Sunday. I think the Sunday I was in London. I'm seeing my my ex was pregnant then with my firstborn. So we played. Waters brought us in London. Monday, Tuesday. I think the game might have been on a Tuesday night. And I remember me in London at hospital and the manager phones me and said, Coley, um, what are you thinking? So when the manager's like saying to you, what are you thinking? You're saying, I'm saying, well, well, I better go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm well, I've just signed for Man United for six minutes. I can't turn. I said, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going, not going. <laughs> but it's one of those ones. So I said, I'm, I remember saying, Max, all right, I'm going to have to go back. So I remember I travelled up the day of the game from London travel back up to Manchester. Okay. So do you imagine that being in London from like I said, I think it was Sunday or whatever, Saturday night, Sunday, being in a hospital, waiting to have the baby. Yeah. The baby not come yet. I travel back on the I think Tuesday when whatever the game was. By the time I get to the ground and get into the dressing room, I found out that the baby's born. So my son's born. Right. Yeah. So like I said, do you imagine that being in London all this time? Uh-huh. Not there. Get back, dressing room. Babies, but I'm like, that's all I need. Play the game, we end up winning 2 1. I end up scoring that night. Now what 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 Peter failed to understand is through that I'm getting it I'm getting in my neck. I can't believe you missed the birth of your first child. I can't believe this, I can't believe that. So I'm getting in the neck constantly. So from that game to the end of the season, yeah, against um West Ham, I've been getting in the neck, mate. Right. I mean, non-stop, non-stop. So really, yeah, that's day when your head's kind of like yeah. all over the gaff. But I'm saying to myself, you know, sod this, bruv. You've got to go in the game. I mean, we can win it, we can win it. We played Coventry as well. Uh, I ended up getting two that night. You know, so that takes us to the last game of the season. So last game of the season, I'm, I mean, I'm in great form. Mentally, I'm, yeah, it's a bit hazy. But mentally, I'm saying to myself, yeah, I score against Southampton, score a couple against Coventry. Last game of the season, but that's all you've got to do is one more, one more hit here. Team plays well, one more hit here. I mean, we're champions. Didn't work out that way. It didn't work out that way. And I, I, I took it on the chin, but as I took that on the chin, I'm like, oh, fuck me, we've lost the league. I'm absolutely devastated. What I'm thinking about is next season. Mate, you, you've got a couple of months off now, but what I'm thinking about is next season. With that, I've got a newborn. So I've got to think about my newborn as well. As I'm thinking about a newborn, Every other day I'm getting, oh, you missed the birth of the child. It's like, so I'm like saying to myself, what, what am I going to do? I don't think people realise like those sacrifices that happen. Yeah. You know, like the little, like missing the birth of your child or but missing cause birthdays, Christmases, I mean, things like that. There you go. Like I'm this. young then. I'm, I'm, I'm just 25 then. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at this. Well, Man United have paid all this money for me to it's try big, and win the champion. To try and win the well, league. It's amazing to say, look, yeah. you've got to go and play. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I can't right. say no. Yeah. They basically brought me to try and win the league, so I'm going to turn and say, I can't make it. And then you say to yourself in the back of my mind, well, what's the manager going to say? If you turn around and say, you can't make it. Mm. Oh. So he's one of those ones. Plus you've just come from dealing with Kevin Keegan, who's very emotional and <laughs> you know holds saying? on to everything. <laughs> and you're like, why if Fergie's like that? Yeah, so I, I, I was going through all that at such a young age, and I mean, everything was like, boom, there you go. you got to deal with it, you got to deal with it. And like I said, in, in the end, that, that, I remember coming to the end of that season, it was so, so hard, going away in the summer. And my mates really lifted me that summer, you know. I said, like, don't worry about it, next season, man. Obviously, you've got your, your newborn now, and that's going to bring a lot of joy to your life. And that. But next season, you, you'll be OK. But going through that two months was, it was hellish, I'm not going to lie. To be fair, Ludet McCloskey had the game of his life. He was unbelievable, Ludo. Honestly, I'll never forget that. He was just he was unbelievable. non-stop. Yeah, but, man. Yeah, it's ups and downs of football. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Is. Um, you mentioned Rude earlier. Obviously, Rude's arrival kind of coincided. You left shortly after that. Um, the, the season before, and Rude got injured and stuff, and he was about to come in. Would, were you kind of thinking, what's going to happen with me here? Because like, <laughs> <You know, laughs> it all went happening again. New strikers coming in. Yeah, it, it was. It was. It was all funny that one because I, I, I knew Rude was coming in. He had done the deal, and then uh, Rude got injured. So in in that time, I think. We were, I think May and I were going, a few, going through money problems at the time. I mean, uh, and then there's half turn around saying, well, bringing Rudy in, was it for 19 million? Yeah, like 19 that. mil. 
So I think the Zara's saying, right, we can't do nothing. We need to generate some money somewhere. So yeah, we're gonna let Coley go. So for me, it was like, I didn't want to go by. It is what it is. If it happens, it happens. Yeah. You know. But I've had a good run. Uh, Ruth breaks down injured. It's crucial. It goes. So the deal had already been done. It's basically done for me to move and go to Chelsea. It's done. Right. Okay. The deal's done. Uh, you didn't know that. No, I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't yeah. realize you, yeah, you, you said to go to Chelsea. So happy that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, was, it was. It was basically done. Done for me. Me to go to Chelsea. Then, um, like I said, Rude broke it down. Bang. That was it. Kai Bosch. Nah, you're not going. Not going. Got a new contract. Give me a new four-year contract. So you're not going anyway. So, I'm, I'm. I'm more than happy to stay. I'm, I want to continue to win things. You got another league yeah. title as well, didn't? You? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Luke was manager at Chelsea then. Uh, God rest his soul. Luke was manager. Manager then uh, was it Hutchison? Was the chief exec there? Mm-hmm. So yeah, the, the deal was basically done for me to go move on. Uh, so then from that, stayed and continued to enjoy myself. That was amazing. Yeah, um, and then you did go. You went to Blackburn, and people kind of forget you completed the set at Blackburn, didn't yeah. you? Like within a couple of months, you won the League Cup, scored yeah. in the final. Against, against mm. managed by Glenn Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> How did that feel? Look, look, no, it, it, in the final. It, it felt really good, not just obviously for me. Like I, I wanted, I, I was desperate to win the League Cup. Desperate, desperate. It's just like I was desperate to win my first Premier League title. I was desperate. Man United, the, the manager always used to play a weakened side. He used to play the young kids yeah. and whatever. And I don't think we got past. I mean, you the final in your first season, I think, and then. That was yeah, the final but league, league Cup. No, yeah. Yeah. Oh, was that FA Cup? no, the FA, FA Cup. Yeah, yeah. League Cup used to get knocked out early doors. It was, yeah, it was one of those like you say, always rotated. Like yeah. in '99, you know, yeah, he won a lot, but he's just like, and it was yeah. frustrating because yeah. I, I wanted to win it. I wanted to win it. So when, when I um when when I moved to Blackburn, uh, and I kept saying, <laughs> I kept saying to the manager, I kept saying, boss, I was like, come on, man, <laughs> boss, I need to go play some games. He kept saying, Coley. You're not going anywhere. I'm like, boss, come on, man. Like, Coley, out my, get out of my office. <laughs> and I was persistent because I wanted to play games. I'm still, in my mind, I'm still young. I was 30. I'm still young. I want to go play games. You know what I mean? And then I got to the stage that you play, for instance, against a Bolton. Didn't matter what you did against Bolton. Get a couple, get a hat trick. You love Real Madrid midweek. You know you're on the bench. Mm. So when you get to that stage of your life when you, you know you... You played at that level, you continue to do well at that level, and then you know whatever happens in the league, you're not going to play in those games. So I'm like that stage where I, like, I want to, I just want to go and play games now. So in the end, he says, "Look, Coley, I'm going to let you go because I know what you like. I know what you like. You want to play games. You are what you are." He said, "The only problem with you, your pride is going to kill you." I'm a proud guy, and he's right. My pride will kill me. I mean, but at least I've gone to and said, "Well, it's not because my pride what done it." What was your relationship like with Philly? Because you talked Good. about like you, you, you'd, you'd argue with him or you'd make your case when you were dropped yeah, yeah. and you'd go to his office and say, or when you were in the team, you'd have a yeah. word with him. You got him well? Yeah, very, very well. He's, he's the only manager who understood me for what I am. Yeah. You know? I can't take a ride on anybody. I can't sit back and sign a four-year contract knowing that I'm going to play 10 games. Say, no, 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 no. And that's why he understood about me. He understood, like, like I said, I remember him saying that your pride will kill you. Yeah, because that, for me, personally, as a man, that's all I have yeah. is my pride. Yeah, and he kept saying, "No, stay, stay. You can stay." I remember saying, "You can stay as long as you want to stay." But I'm saying to myself, "I want to play games. I still want to play." I mean, I, I love the lads. I love the football club. I love everything about it. But I need to play. I need to feel validated. I mean, I, I don't want to feel like we've gone with one four nil and I'm still getting paid at the end of the month and my contribution has been zero. Mm. My dad come from Jamaica and he worked his tits off. Yeah. So how can I turn around and say to my dad, oh, yeah, well, you played it? No, I didn't play it. Why you didn't play? Oh, because X, Y, Z. But you're not doing anything. And you're making money. Because that was my dad. It's like, oh, my dad always used to say when I was younger, get up every single day, work. Yeah. The work, you can't work anymore. So I'm saying to myself when I'm at that age, my dad wouldn't do this. So I don't want my dad thinking now I'm sitting around picking up money for not contributing. Because that's the way I've been brought up. So in the end, that, that's just my pride telling me from my dad to me and said to me, you work. <laughs> if, if I was the other way around, no, but I don't sit at my United. I sat on a bench and you know, continue to pick up trophies. But I, I couldn't do it. I, I've not got it in me. So when I, when I left, like I said, the manager said, look, 
going to let you go yet. I don't want you to go. Just as long as you want, but you at that time that like, you just want to go play games. Was the England ever a consideration now? Was was the England situation yeah. like if I'm playing regularly and then... Half in the it, back of my mind, yeah. because it's Sven then by this Yeah, time? half yeah. in the back of my mind because I, I, I believe that Major tournaments, I, I should have played in. Oh, right. There's no people turning around. No, he's not good enough for international level. All that nonsense. I played Champions League football. Me. I mean, I'm playing Champions, Champions League football. football for Manchester United, competing against the best teams in Europe. I mean, the partnership I had, with, yeah, yeah, partnership I had with Yorkie and players like that. And the people, people talk about me in Europe. So how can anyone turn around and say, "Ah, oh, you're not good enough to play international, international level"? You're playing teams like. Azerbaijan and not being disrespectful, all those kind of teams. And you're trying to tell me in the media I'm not good enough. So how do I do it against these teams no in chance. Barcelona, Juventus? How do I do it against those teams? And you guys are not telling me. So that in the back of my mind, I'm saying, right, I want to, I want to have the opportunity to try playing in one major tournament. You know, it didn't materialise like that, and that, that was my only regret. That I, leaving Man United when I did, I shouldn't have left, but that's my pride. I mean, my pride, yeah. I just say the pride before the fall, but my, my pride, I, 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 I love the fall because but I, you, I, I can't you, do that. You completed pride. the set though by doing that. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't so have completed the set if you didn't it. do yeah. that. Yeah, and that, that's for me, that was that was massive to know that I'm one of those players now who's won everything in the domestic game. You know, I remember retiring and saying to myself, yeah, you half cracked it, you know, you achieved then, everything that you want to achieve. And then you all kick over joined you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you couldn't get rid of him. <laughs> no, I, you, you, you can blame me for that. I said to him, Look, just come, just come and enjoy the last couple of years of your career, man. It's, it's, a, it's a nice football club. Uh, ran well. John Williams was, was um, the chairman, and John was cool, chief exec. He was real, real cool. And I just said, just come and enjoy yourself, man. Decent fan base. Uh, enjoy your football and can all call it quits. It didn't work out that way in the end, but that that was my intentions. Yeah, it was um it was an interesting one. Black Ben's Black Ben's a good club as well. He was part of a good place to go in. He's great away end. Great away. Yeah, the whole end oh yeah. Yeah, yeah really good, good away. Um ninety nine was obviously a great year for, for Manchester United and yourself, but also it was a great year for music. Outstanding yeah. Yes. Coley, me and him are big fans, you know. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> We, we love that track. I, I, it is I, one of the greatest <laughs> tunes of all time. Come on. I, I was saying, um, I, I did a podcast the other day and it was asked me about it and I said, you know, after we won everything in 99, we all believe we could do anything we wanted. <laughs> yeah. It was, it, was, it was one of those <laughs> ones. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was one of those ones, man. I, I could go wrestle with great whites and all those kinds of things, man. I was invincible. You know what I'm saying? But in, in that, I remember doing that. And I remember then I was doing How did it come about? Did you want to do it? Did someone approach you, know, you to do it? My agent at the time knew someone in the music business and she just suggested it to him. He said, you're fast. I said, man, why not, man? Did well, you write your own you? bars? Uh, no, the, the, the boys did it for me, to be oh. fair. So I, I did that. Did you remember any of them? I can't. We, we can. You, know, <laughs> you got to remember United forever, whatever the weather. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you see, the, the money Less than 100%? Yeah. Never. never. But yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's a so, bar. Come I mean, on. So I, I remember doing that. I remember doing that. And then not too long after the final, I remember doing some charity work. I ended up in Zimbabwe. So that, that for me was like, rah, I'm on the high, biggest high ever. And then in Zimbabwe, I'm like, wow. Is this how the world really is? Mm. So straight away, yeah. I mean, I see the highs and lows of life, you know, but everything like coincided with each other. Doing that, oh, I can do anything. I can wrestle with sharks, I can make make music. And then going to Zimbabwe, I'm like, oh my God, this is so humbling. Mm. You know, so within that time, I'm, I'm doing all different kind of things. You still get to kind of, you obviously you're, you're ambassador at the club now. You still get to travel around, just come back from LA. Um, you're going to be on a pre-season tour. How do you, how are you finding that? Is that something you enjoy? Because leaving football must be difficult when you haven't got that. You know, you scored goals every week. Like not having that adrenaline rush, having the crowd and everything. Do you enjoy doing what you're doing at the moment? You no, know, I, I, I love it. Getting into it was like I, I remember. I, I don't know if you guys know Ali Edge uh, at Man United. I remember Ali. Country. He said, Coley, Coley, um, we'd like you to, to do a, a little bit of um, a little bit of work off the pitch and that, like, I mean, meeting sponsors and all that. I'm like, Ali, I don't think I'm built for this, you know, it's not me. She goes, Coley, Coley, just, just try it. I'm like saying, Ali, no. <laughs> she said to me, right, Coley, just try it once. And if you don't like it, yeah, I promise you, I won't bother you again. I said, okay, Ali, I'll, I'll try it once. 
He Still never stopped. Still yeah, we was uh, with Chucky the other month because we went do a little gig with Chucky yeah. and uh, yeah, he's talking about things like that. you enjoy when you you get to be up there and speak about the old days with. I, 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 I love goes that. around, yeah. wing goes around, and all that. Can I get some some tips for this golf day? Anyway, <laughs> enjoy. Give it. me some advice. Oh. That's that, that's that's the biggest tip I can give you. It's just just enjoy it. Hopefully we've we've arranged the weather. Hopefully it'll be a nice day. Uh, June, what we're expecting it. I mean, obviously the, the weather in London is a little bit different to Manchester, mm. so we should fingers crossed get nice tips. Just enjoy it, you know. There's gonna be quite a few people turn up as well, which for me is oh, that's is pressure massive. on me then. Yeah, I don't think we've got what eighteen teams at the moment. And I, I think that's brilliant knowing that what we middle of March and we've got eighteen teams already and it's in June and we can get up to twenty five teams. I think we've got a chance if it be Yeah, yeah. A huge chance to raise loads of money. Um and you guys can help with that as well. The link's in the description below. If you wanna find out more details on the golf day. Um, the Andy Cole Golf Day um, and obviously you've got the Andy Cole Fund part of uh, Kidney Research UK as well links are all in the description please go and support um, the absolutely fantastic work that the Andy Cole and the Kidney Research UK are doing at this moment in time can I just say as well it's been an absolute pleasure yeah, thank to you. have you sitting here yeah. with me obviously you were the first player that I interviewed uh, alongside with Brian Robson but also like like I said to you growing up you know, my mates pretend to be cold, me pretend to be, like, you're just someone that's, as a child, as a kid watching football, I just remember a lot um, of your goals, of your memories, like, and still to this day, I will fight anyone who doesn't put respect <laughs> on your name. So thank you very I much like for, for yeah, coming out. Yeah, it's really been a great shout. Out. Um, and yeah, good luck with everything you do for Kidney Research Thank UK. Thank you very much. Good luck with the golf day. We'll be back. Guys, uh, we're going to be making content at the golf day as well. So hopefully you'll get to see me bringing a trophy home, maybe. Um, but yeah, subscribe, like, comment, share, go and support the charity. See you a bit.